Yes. Wonderful day that the Lord has given us again. It's a beautiful day outside. Yes. No doubt it's a beautiful day on the inside as well. We come to glorify and magnify him today. As we stand to our feet this morning, let us come before the Lord with thanksgiving and praise and honor that he is so due this morning. Amen. Let's lift our hands and our voices unto him today. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for another opportunity to come and worship you. Thank you, God, for another opportunity to magnify you, Lord, this morning. God, we ask you by your Holy Spirit, God, touch, move. God, bless in a mighty way. God, speak to hearts and souls. God, as we come before you this day, we come before you to lift up your name, that match this name, uh, that awesome name of Jesus. Name. We just thank you, say thank you, God, for watching over us, God, throughout the week, keeping us, God, covering us, God, throughout your week, God. And Lord, we just thank you today. God, we ask you, Lord, to move, God, and meet needs in this house. Meet needs, God, in every heart, every soul, those in person, God, here, those watching online, Lord, as well, God. Just accomplish your divine work and divine will that it be done. Lord, we glorify you. We thank you. We honor you today. We just say thank you this morning. We bless you. We honor you, Heavenly Father, today. We say glory to your name. Amen. We give you praise this morning. Give the Lord a good cut offering this morning. Give me thanks today. Amen. Truly, we serve an awesome God today. We serve a God that's able to resolve things in your life. Amen. If we can grab a song hymn this morning. To him today. Page 360 in your songbooks this morning. I am resolved. Come on, come on. Help us sing it this morning. Amen. Unto the Lord. Do 
Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. Hasten means to run to him, church. Hey, man, let's run to Jesus this morning. Run to him. Cling on to him this morning. Bless that wonderful name this morning. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. Let's run to his feet this day. We glorify you. Another song 253 in your song books this morning. 253 in your song books. Jesus is able to set us free this morning. 253 in your song books. Excuse me, not 253. Jesus is God that can set us free, church, from the bondage. Amen. Amen. Truly, it's a good God today. 263, 263 in your song books. Go well, this way. Well, once like a bird in prison I dwell, but no freedom from my sorrow I felt. Oh, but Jesus came and listened to me. Glory to God, he said, he set me free. He set me free, yeah. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for I'm glory bound. Somebody touched me while I was praying. 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 Somebody touched me while I
street while I was praying. Somebody, I know it was, I know it was the hand. So give me the glory this morning. Well, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. I know it was the hand. What a mighty God we serve. Well, what a mighty God we what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. Come on and sing it. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we Oh, what a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty on this Sunday morning, let's worship him this morning. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Is he fighting to you this morning? What a mighty, what a mighty God. Angels bow before him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty. Is he awesome? Say awesome this morning. What an awesome. What an awesome God we serve. What an awesome God. Oh, what an awesome God we serve. Angels bow. Oh, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What an awesome God. Oh, what a loving God we serve. What a loving God we Oh, he's a loving God this morning. What a loving God we serve. Angels bow. Oh, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Praise in church this morning. Give him glory. Give him honor today. Let him reach down and touch you this morning. Let him reach down and touch you. As we reach up to him, let's reach up to the king today. Say, Jesus, pick me up. Pick me up. Do a work in my life this morning. Do something awesome today. He's able. He's more than able, church. As we seek his face. We seek his face this morning. Look to the heavens today. And watch him do a mighty work in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me know we serve a mighty God, church. Amen. Whatever you have need of this day, our Jesus can do it. Amen. He is more than him. You may be seated here this morning. We serve a mighty, mighty God. Amen. Truly, truly, God is able to do great and mighty works, great and mighty exploits in this service. Come and expect it. As we uh, put out a, a saying this morning, as many of you probably got the WhatsApp and various things, it said, come expecting God. Amen. Come expecting and believing God. We come in with great expectation. I'm telling you, God can do something great. Amen. In your life, you come believing God. Come trusting God. Amen. Come expecting and he can do it. Amen. If you don't have any expectation, God won't do anything. Amen. I like what the scripture says. He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, how big is our God? He's saying this song sometimes about how great is our God. Naturally, we think he'd be talking about all the wonderful things he do. But at the same time, he's asking us the same thing. How great is he to you and me? Amen. How big or how mighty is he? Is there anything that's too hard for the Lord? Amen. Is there anything to death this morning? All right. Say it with confidence. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Amen. All right. All right. Got a few to believe that. Amen. And truly, we're thankful today for there's nothing too hard for our God. Amen. Amen. We continue to uh, uh, glad to see each one here in the house of the Lord. Those watching online as well uh, through our, our YouTube and Facebook page here. Welcome. Welcome as well. And I'd like to welcome all our visitors here this day. Uh, I'm looking around as well. I don't see too many visitors. Amen. Uh, I can see you folks home, folks. Amen. Even all the way from Guyana. Good to see you folks back there. Amen. Uh, the Aaron family back there as well always going to have some type of representative in the house of the Lord, amen, we're glad to have you guys here as well, amen, truly again, God is a good God, there's nothing too hard for our God and, and uh, uh, we want to continue to pray continue to pray for, again, various ones um, as Charlene and her dad, again, Mr. Dennison Mr. Dennison, he's in a pretty critical condition but she called me on Monday she called me on Monday, said Pastor, it's not looking good it's not looking good. Uh, he probably won't make. She thought she wasn't gonna make a number of a couple more hours, and so we we shot up there to the hospital on Monday. Went by his bedside and prayed. I said, "You pray, we gonna pray, and we are gonna believe God." And it's Sunday now, Amen. 
and he's still with us, right? Amen. He's still alive. Amen. We're going to continue to pray and believe God for a healing touch from him. Continue to pray also. Uh, uh, I got a Toya. She was telling me her daughter had been in the hospital as well. And various ones, again, is, things are going around, but God is a God that can heal. Amen. Yeah. God is a God that is nothing too hard for the Lord. Amen. We serve a mighty God. That's why we lift him up and glorify him. Elevate your faith and believe. And as we uh, share with him, uh, again, he's kind of he was in a sedated state. But I say, even God can penetrate the sedation. Amen. And God can move and do what doctors cannot do. And that was the type of God we serve. Amen. And we pray and believe. As we still continue to share with you about Mr. Uh, St. Bill Noel. Uh, my wife, we and her went up to him and he was, doctors wasn't looking good for him as well. Wasn't looking good. Internal organs all messed up. But my wife began to whisper in his ear and began to pray with him. Amen. Pray. She prayed in Creole to him. She knows another language, Creole. Amen. French, because we didn't know how good his English was. But in French, English, Creole, Japanese, Chinese, it don't matter. The God of heaven is able. Amen. When we call on the name of Jesus, amen, and that man's internal organs got healed. Uh, that man's internal organs, would, he was delivered. He's at home now in his right mind. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's the type of God we serve this morning. Amen. We serve a mighty God. So we continue to believe God. And we, we, we say it's a season of miracles. Amen. This is a miracle season. As we approach Christmas season, we believe in God for miracles to take place. Amen. Believe in God for awesome things. Third time we come out breakthrough. And one of the breakthroughs was, was when Jesus came into the scene. A breakthrough that when the people were crying out for 400 something years of silence between the Old Testament and New Testament. It's roughly 400 years of God just not doing anything. So the people began to cry out and said, Lord, we need you to move. We need a touch. And the family father said, son, go. Amen. Go down and, and deliver my people. Go down. Amen. For my children. Go hear that cry. And no doubt, thank God for God is able to hear our cry this morning. That's able to meet needs. Able to do great and mighty works. And so we continue to trust God and believe God for his mighty touch. Amen. Amen. Truly we serve an awesome God this day. Amen. So continue to be mindful again. And so with that being said, Christmas holiday season. This Sunday, uh, uh, this year, the Christmas falls on a Sunday, right? So we, we come on out and let's celebrate together, amen. The date which we set aside as the birth of Christ. Again, they try, still trying to figure out the exact date, but we set aside this, this day of December 25th. It's a Sunday morning, right? So I know the kids are chomping at the bit, various things. If I can grab that back door for me because it's still open. Uh, we got this preservative heat. It's that time of the year. Amen. I see dollar signs flying out the door right now. Amen. Amen. The offering basket just blew out the window right now. Amen. <laughs> Keep that thing closed. Amen. Uh, uh, so we, we begin to think about um, uh, uh, getting this Christmas season. So we want to have an awesome celebration. Perhaps my, my daughters and can get the kids prepared to sing, amen, as they did last year, and some Christmas carols and various things. Have, let's have an awesome time. That's Sunday morning at 11 a.m. I remember looking back as a kid, I remember we used to have to go to church on Sunday mor uh, Christmas morning. It didn't matter what day of the week it was. If it fell on a Monday, we was there. If we fell on a, a Tuesday, we had to go. Six o'clock in the morning. Oh, man, we had a Christmas morning service, 6 a.m. Some of y'all probably may have known about that as well. And uh, we, we was mad, we was, especially little kids. We was like, mm, church, 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 church. And man, that preacher, they sang songs and took a long time to finish the service. I couldn't wait to get home to my presence. <laughs> and so naturally, now nah, we want to put uh, again the Lord. But we're, gonna have, we're not going to have it at 6 a.m. We're going to have it at 11 a.m. So we make them kids. I won't make it quick Sunday morning. Amen. But not really. But again, you think about that. So bring them, though, however. Bring them. The toys will be there. Them toys will come and go. All of my toys y'all used to get in Christmas time. Y'all probably can't even remember what y'all got for Christmas last year, can you? Yeah, you think back and say, well, what did I get? Hey, man. It was one man one time. This one man one time. I'm going to get you guys going back to the worship here. This one man said, he, all his presents, he opens up every 25th of the month. He spreads out through the whole year. <laughs> he said, so I, he can relive Christmas throughout the whole year. So every 25th of the month, he'll open up a new present. Hey, man. And so we're thankful for God. But anyway, it's more than presence. It's more than presence. It's more than uh, getting all the lights and all the splendor that we uh, celebrate. But it's about the king. Amen. Amen. The king of kings and lord of all. So be with us on the 25th of uh, December. She prepares to sing this song here. Let us enter back into worship. Amen. Again, we want to uh, uh, worship who we, who we worship. The one who came. The one who gave his life. The one who 
the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. Amen. He's in our midst today. Amen. Let him be the center of it all. Amen. The center of it all. Jesus be the center of it all.
every knee, every tongue. Do you confess in the day? Confessing today as your Lord and your Savior, amen? Let him be your king today. Sing it this morning. Jesus, his name is Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Come on and worship him this morning. Jesus. His name is Jesus, sir. Jesus. Ma'am, his name is Jesus. We can worship him. Jesus. be the center, Jesus be, it's all about you, it's all about you, it's all about you, uh, come on stand and worship him this morning, can you stand and worship him, come on he deserves the praise this morning, Jesus be the center of it all, Jesus the Lord of it all today, what did you come here for this morning, did you come to worship, did you come to worship this morning, oh, from my heart to the heavens. Jesus be the same. It's all about you. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about from my heart to the heavens, from my heart to the heavens. Jesus be the center. It's all about. Oh, worship Him this morning. It's all about you. It's about Him this morning. It's about Him. It's about him. Did you come to worship him? Amen. He's here this morning. Amen. He's here. Amen. What did you come for? Amen. Did you come to get something from God? Amen. Did you come to receive from God today? Amen. amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Give him a praise offering this morning. Amen. amen. Get the next one ready. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. What did you come to do today? Amen. God is here. He's in our midst today. Amen. We come to see Jesus today. That man came to the place looking for silver and gold. He said, I don't have any of that. He said, I got Jesus. Amen. I can offer to you. Absolutely. Amen. And today, that's what he's here for. Amen. Amen. To get something from God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We got one more to sing. You can keep standing. Come on, sing it, sing it, sing it. This song is called again, King of Glory. Today, we serve a king that sits high. He sees every life. He sees everything that you go through. He's the king of glory this morning.
lifted our prayer this morning. Convicted heart, the lost soul this morning. Fill this house, Lord. The king is in the building. Fill this place. I just want to be with you. Let's make that our prayer. I just want to be with you. Hallelujah. Praising church. Amen. One more time. King of glory. Feel this place. The power of God. The power and the movement of his spirit this morning. Truly grateful to be back one more time in the house of the Lord. Glad to have all first time visitors. Amen. We do have some first time visitors here this morning. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Glad to have you in service with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And at this time, we're going to dismiss for Children's Church this morning. Amen. And uh, um, we can uh, dismiss at this time for the youth. Thank God for our youth. Amen. Thank God for the children. Again, coming to hear about Jesus this morning. Coming to hear about the Lord, our God. The Lord Jesus. Amen. And truly, it's a blessing. The future leaders, the future leaders of our nation. Future leaders in our community. Amen. Children and grandchildren. Men and women. Amen. Bring your children. Amen. Set the example by coming to the house of the Lord. Set the example by coming again to uh, raise them up in the way they should go. Again, we they raised up in so many different ways. Raised up again in our society that will eat them up and chew them up. Amen. And truly, we're thankful today that again we have a place where they can come and hear about the Lord, the King of Kings. Amen. They have so many idols that they are thrown in front of them, musicians, artists, Hollywood, all these different things. But amen, it's nothing like the king of glory, amen, to hear about Jesus this morning. Amen. Appreciate each one of the little ones today. Continue to pray for our youth today. Amen. We thank God for each one of them today. Amen. Little Kanila here. Amen. Truly thank you. I want to uh, come out of the book of Luke this morning, the book of Luke, chapter 8, chapter 8, Luke chapter 8, and we'll look at uh, verses, we'll read 38 through 42, 38 through 42, I'll probably cover it all in a minute here, but we want to cover 38 through 42 in your Bibles, amen, every Christian should have a Bible, amen, even if you're not a Christian, get a Bible. Amen. Get a Bible. They have them now. You can put them on your phone. Amen. Don't look at pornography. Look at the Bible. How's that? For you starting already. Amen. Get your Bible. Amen. You download a Bible. Amen. Not the latest rendezvous. Amen. Talk with God. Amen. Truly, God is good. Let's look at this. Uh, uh, verses 38 through 42. I'll read. 8, 38 through 42. The Bible says, Now a man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him and Jesus sent him away saying return to thine own house and show how great things God hath done unto thee and he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him and in verse 40 he goes this way he says it came to pass that when Jesus was returned the people gladly received him for they were waiting for him. And he says, Behold, there came a man named Jairus, or Jairus, some pronounce it that way. 
and said, and he was a ruler of the synagogues, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come to his house. For he had one daughter only, about 12 years old of age, and he lay a dying, but he went to the people, but as the people, as he went to the people, thronged him. Let's read verse 42 again. The Bible says, for he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and lay a dying, but as he went, the people thronged him. Thronged him. In other words, crowded him. Surrounded him. Amen. Let's look at I want to give it a title this morning from that text. Gathering a thronging around Jesus. Gathering or thronging around Jesus. Amen. Reverend, if you open us in prayer, please. Father God, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. And we thank you, Father God, for our pastor. We thank you, Lord, for the word that you burned on the inside of his heart. And we ask you, Lord, to let that word accomplish eternal purposes in the lives of the hearers. We ask you, Lord, to save this morning. Fill with the Holy Ghost this morning. Heal broken hearts this morning. And we ask you, Lord, to set the captives free. We ask you, Lord, to let a fresh function of your power and your spirit rest upon your servant this morning. And let this word accomplish its purposes for your divine will. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Gathering a thronging around Jesus. You think about that, a crowd, a crowd gathering in various places. I immediately go back to maybe living, especially living here. Living in New York City, we, we see the crowded spaces, a place where there's a lot of people, a lot of uh, uh, things that have been crowded, an overcrowded city, if you please. Uh, again, sometime on your commute home, you see it. Getting on the train, boy, it's a loss, loss. Again, uh, people get caught up in jamming into the train between probably about between 4 and 5.30. Man, boy, it's a lot of people trying to jam in, especially when the trains are backed up. How many know what I'm talking about? People will stomp and they will kick and they will shove to get their way in to the car. Are you thinking about this on even on the road? You, you go and you travel and you you go in various places and how the again the roads is about that same time and stop and go the BQE and the LIE and all these different places. The roads are jammed. Uh, uh, even just trying to go the back road sometimes. People, everybody and their mama's trying to do the same thing. Because of the crowd, uh, get away from it and, and, and various places. I even think about the crowd, uh, again, uh, whether it's, uh, again, uh, the day before Thanksgiving, they have, uh, uh, the day of Thanksgiving, they have at the grocery store. Everybody's in there trying to crowd the grocery at the last minute. How many know what I'm talking about? Or, yeah, or, or before the pandemic, how the, the newsman said, hey, go get all this stuff and go get toilet paper and Lysol and all these different things. Why? And the crowd was there. How many know what I'm talking about? Or even like the Reverend said here about Black Friday, everybody jumps and jams and runs and try to get the big screen and this, that, and the other. Some folks get trampled over. Why? Because they're out to get something or some type of good in it all. Crowded spaces, stadiums, events, uh, concerts, uh, all these different places. But in this particular case, they were crowded because they were trying to get to Jesus. Amen. They were trying to get to Jesus. Do we crowd? Are we here today trying to get to Jesus? Come on. Did we come today to get to Jesus? What did you come for? Amen. Did you come to get saved? Did you come to get a miracle? Did you come to get a blessing? Did we come to get something from Jesus? Amen. This crowd here today came to get something from God. Why? Because they knew he was the answer. The Bible says in verse 38, go to verse 38 for me. The Bible says there was a man who was possessed with a devil. If you're lost today, there's a devil living on the inside of you. There's a devil that reigns and rules your mind, your heart, your soul. He dictates your life. The Bible says before we come to Christ, we're children of the devil. How many know that? Children of the devil bound by sin. If the devil says jump, we jump high, high. If the devil says lie, we lie. If the devil says cheat, we cheat. On and on and on. Children of the devil. That's why we must be born again. How many say that this morning? 
And so the Bible goes on and says, uh, this man was possessed with devils, but God delivered this man. The Bible says the devils departed him. The devils were able to flee from his life. And church, when the blood is applied to your life, when the blood and, and the power of salvation comes in, it is able to set the captive free. Are you listening this morning? It's able to bring men and women to Christ Jesus today. And the Bible says he departed. Again, why? Because Jesus had done a work in his life. When we get in contact with Christ, he does a work in our lives. And the Bible says he, he went this place and they, he, he besought him. He asked him, he says, uh, uh, that he might be with him. He wanted, after Christ does a work in your life, you want to be with Jesus as well. Amen. I say you want to be with him. Amen. You want to be in church. This don't show up once every blue moon. Amen. You want to be in the house of the Lord. You want to worship him. You want to read your Bible. You want to pray. You want to see God's face. When you, when you come to Christ, we want to be around him. I mean, say that. Amen. You want to be in the Lord. You want to be uh, uh, forgiven. You want to be uh, a believer in Christ. When you come to Christ, it's not something that happens just in your childhood either. Say, preacher, when I was little, I used to go. When I was young, I got baptized. But you know, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. You want to live for him every day. You want to live for him every day of your life. That's what it says here. The Bible says the man wanted to be with Jesus. He wanted to be with him. Because, again, he, and, but Jesus said, no, go back. Go back. He didn't want him. Jesus said, no, go back to your place. Why? Because, again, naturally the man was probably wondering why not. But he said here today how he wanted him to be in his heart. He wanted to be down in his heart. And again, we can come here this morning. We can come and hear the message. We can come and worship God. But when we leave, it has to be down in the heart. Amen. It must be down in the heart. The Bible says he returned. He says, return to thy house and show the great things in which God has done. He says, when you go back, go tell others about what he's done. He said he went his way, in verse 39, he went his way and published it throughout the whole city. He says, oh, how great Jesus had done unto him. Church of the day, do we use our mouth to glorify and tell others about Jesus? Amen. Do we use it to tell others about Jesus, church? Amen. Amen. He wanted this man to go back and tell him. Go back and tell others. Go back and tell your family, your friends, your loved ones, your sons and your daughters. Go back and tell your workers and your co-workers. Go tell all men and women about Jesus. Amen. Amen. What do we use our lips for today? Amen. What do we use our lips for today? Do we use it to glorify God? Do, or do we use it to curse one another? Do we use it to lie to one another? Do we use it to cheat one another? Today, are we listening this morning? What do we use our lips for today? We should use it to give glory to God today. The Bible says, I want to be you, you to be used, you be use you for the kingdom of God. How many want to be used by God this morning? Say, preacher, I've been running all my life. Been running all my life, doing all manners of things. Busy, but the devil house was busy. I was talking with the lady the other day. She said, uh, my husband works, 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 works. No time for the kids. No time for the family. No time for just quiet time. He comes home, goes to sleep, and goes right back out the door. Goes right back out. And that's where you're getting the brokenness of it all. The devil have us so busy to where you don't spend time with God. You get up in the morning and go. Got to go. Out the door, got to go. Got to rush out into the crowd. Got to rush out here and do and fro here and there. My friend today, get to Jesus this morning. Get to Jesus, my friend today. And get to him, worship him. Don't let the devil tie up and occupy all of your life. Because your life will pass away. And Jesus will want to know, what have you done with me? What did you do with the salvation message? What did you do when I invited you? What did you do when I said, come to me, give your life over me? What will we do? With this thing, Jesus sent him away. He said, I want you to go back and have it done in your heart. He says he returned to his house and he went his way and he published it throughout the whole city. And so now, not just again on the surface, but now down in the inside. Amen. When we've been around Jesus, you want to tell somebody. Amen. I challenge you to tell someone about the Lord. Amen. Tell them, let them see Jesus living in you. Amen. Let them see Christ in you. But you must get him inside first. Amen. Get him on the inside. And then go tell someone about him. Verse 40, the Bible says, And it came to pass when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him. They gladly received him. Let me read it again. 
when they came to Jesus, they were gladly received him. They gladly, and they were waiting, and for they were waiting for him. They were waiting, and, and yes, as we said this morning, come expecting and believing God to do something in your life. And so what did you come here for today? Did you come to get something from God? They came, they were expecting and waiting for Jesus, no doubt. They were expecting, no doubt, him to do something. And we challenge you this morning and say, you know what? I came to get something from God this morning. The Bible says they were waiting and they gladly received him. Have you received him in your life? How many have received Christ in your life? To really, really, really know him. Say his name again. Jesus. Amen. Amen. What will you do with Jesus? Are you waiting for him? Are you looking to him? My friend, the Bible goes on and says, verse 41, the Bible says, Behold, there was a man named Jairus. Jairus. Or Jairus. The Bible says he went, he was a ruler of the synagogue. The Bible says he fell down at Jesus' feet. And besought him that he would come to his house. This man, well, he was he was a ruler in the synagogue, basically a church leader. But he needed something as well. You know, I stand today, we all need something from God. Let me say that. We all need something from God. From the preacher all the way down. Amen. We all need something from God. And this man said, I need a touch from you, God. I need you to move in my life. I need a touch in my household. The Bible says his daughter, he said, I came and he fell down at the feet of Jesus. He fell down and humbled himself before God. And said, Lord, I need a touch. And the Bible says in verse 42, he said he had only one daughter about, of about the age of 12, too young. Very young. And she was laid there dying. But as he went, to the, but as he, went he was headed for this man's house. The people began to throng him back to the title. You know what, again, because everybody has a need in their lives. His daughter was laying there dying. But he knew if he can go to God, God can make it whole. You know what? Things in your life, nothing's too big. Each one of us have issues. Desperation, however, was to get to God. The doctor said she was going to die. One day the doctor going to say, we all going to die. One day they're going to put dirt in our face as well. And what would we have done? What would we have done? I was sharing with you about uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dennison. And he was there laying in the hospital this past Monday. I said, hey, if you can hear me, make sure your soul is ready. Make sure your soul is ready to meet God. You see, we can leave this service. We can die in this service or leave this service. Die in the car crash. Die from a heart attack. People are dying suddenly. Instantly, 30, young, it don't matter what age it is. Brother Jimmy just celebrated 75th, happy belated. God has spread his life for 75 years. But there'll come a day when it's all said and done. We we'll all have to stand before God. I mean, know that. We we'll all have to give an account for what we've done. And the Bible says my daughter is dying. And so naturally he came before the Lord. He, he laid down her at his feet and said, Lord, can you do something in my life? And church said, don't wait till you're dying for God to do something. Amen. Don't wait till your last breath. But do it now. Get to God now. Amen. And let the Lord step in and have his way in your life. The Bible says, and so we have, all of us have needs. All of us have issues. And so the Bible says that they throng Jesus as he was making his way to the man's house. You see, God is able to come and meet your need as well. God is able to touch lives and souls of every individual in this place. Every issue, every circumstance, God is able to do it. If you need a touch this morning, my God is able to do it. If you need deliverance this morning, God is able to do it. If you need a miracle today, God is able to do it. If you need salvation, the born again experience, God is able to do it this morning. Amen. He has a life-changing experience for you and I. Amen. God is a forgiving God, a loving God. Amen. And whatever or however your issue may be, God is able. The Bible says the woman in verse 43. So Jesus was making his way. He was making his way to this man's house. But along the way, we share with you about how the people thronged him. 
The people had gathered around him, and there was a woman with the issue of blood along the way. Y'all know the story how they, she had an incurable disease also for 12 years. But 12 is a divine number as well. And God began to show his divine power. The, the little girl was 12. And the Bible says this woman for 12 years had this issue. How long has your issue been? Say, so preach all my life. It don't matter how long. But again, God can. The Bible says she came behind him and she touched the border of his garment. In verse 44, and the Bible says immediately he, uh, her issue was, was, was resolved by uh, a stance, staunch. The Bible says in verse 45, and Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? Say, the Bible says we, 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 we all denied, the various ones denied, said Peter and those others said, Master, look at the multitude of people. Look at all these people in here. And he's asking me who touched you. People are just thronging you. People are just gathered around needing something. My friend today, again, Jesus is able in the midst of this crowd right now to meet needs in this place. On the back row, on the front row, again, up in the pulpit, God is able to meet every need in this house. God is able, how many believe it today? God is able to do what you have need of today. God is able, and so he says, all these people around, and you're asking me, who touched me? And they say, he says, no, somebody really touched me this morning. Again, some just showed up just to be showing up. Some came for the wrong reasons. But God is looking for somebody that will touch him. Some came to kill Jesus. Some came to destroy Jesus. Some came to find fault with Jesus. But the ones that came and said, God, I need a touch from you. Did you come this morning to get a touch? Or did you come to find fault? Did you come to find issue? Or did you come to get blessed by God? What did you come for? The Bible says, again, he touched him. Who touched me? God knows when you have something. God knows when you have a need. Looking for God for real. <laughs> Amen. Looking for something from God. And the Bible says in me, he says, Master, and somebody touched me. He said, No, somebody touched me. Somebody really was looking for something. Somebody was really looking for the thing. And the Bible says his virtue fell out upon them. And the Bible says in verse 47, and when the woman saw uh, that she was hid herself and came trembling, falling down before him, uh, she says she declared in verse 47, she declared unto him before all the people what cause she touched him uh, and how she was healed immediately. She made a declaration. You see that she, how she made a declaration of why she came. Uh, she let them know why I came to Jesus. Why I needed something. My friend, I declare to you today uh, I tell you why I came to Jesus because I was lost, miserable, without God. Amen. Lost, miserable without the Lord. I needed a savior. I needed deliverance. I was bound by alcohol, bound by sin, bound by the drugs and the things of life. Uh, but I'll tell you today, God is able to, let me say it this morning, God is able to set free, bound by fornication, bound by sexual deviation, but God is able to set captives free. Yeah. Jesus said, he says, he said, I'm declared to you, I was sick. He said, I was sick, and the Bible says I touched him, and Jesus healed immediately. I'm telling you, whatever your issue is, let Jesus touch you today. Let him touch your heart. Whether you're angry, God can touch that angry heart. You're bitter, God can touch that bitter heart. You're sorrowful today, God can touch that sorrowful heart. If you have a need in your soul, let the Lord touch you today. Let him deliver you today. That thing is of the devil this morning, and I want you to know our God today is able to set the captive free. Don't walk around bound up by the enemy. Amen. They thrown Jesus because they needed something. They needed something. The Bible says, making a declaration. She said, I declare, the last three verses. She said, she declared unto him before all the people. My friend, you ain't go around confessing everything. But you can make it known to God. Amen. Let me say that. Go make it known unto God. The Bible says uh, in Philippians 4, 6. Turn me there real quickly. Give me a few more minutes here. The Bible says, and be, be careful for nothing. In other words, don't worry about nothing. Amen. Be careful for nothing. Meaning, care the cares of your life. The cares that go on in the issues of life. But in everything, in prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. What is your need today? Make it known unto God. The Bible says... Let's move a little further. In the peace of God which passeth all understanding. See, there's a peace of God that brings 
in all understanding, misunderstanding, any understanding. There's a peace. And when you have God, you're at peace. When you're at God, you have peace. Somebody's phone going off. If I can get it. There's a peace beyond all understanding. God bring peace to the home, to the mind, to the troubled heart. He shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. This woman was at peace. In verse 48, let's go back to verse 48, the main text. And he said unto her, daughter, be of comfort. This woman that was healed with the issue of blood. Be of comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Go in peace. And you know what? In life today, God wants you to go in peace. There's no peace. There's no rest in your soul. Perhaps you have no peace. You toss and turn to and fro. There's no peace in your heart. No peace in your home. No peace in your marriage. No peace with your children. The same lady I was talking with, she said, no doubt the household, the children, everything, there's no peace. Not even comfortable in their own home. And so Jesus gave this woman peace. And that's what's lacking in the home. Lacking in lives. No peace because of lack of Christ. And the Bible went on and says, let's go back to verse 48. So all this is going on. <laughs> he's, he's trying to get to Jairus. He's trying to get to Jairus' house. Amen. The Bible says, and so he continued on his journey. And then we pick back up in verse 48. So this woman was healed. Praise the Lord. He went on to the next issue. And the Bible says, he said unto her, daughter, be of good comfort. That faith has made thee whole. Let's go to verse uh, uh, 50. The Bible says, and when uh, Jesus had heard it, he answered, fear not, believe only. And so they came to this house. And they ran up to him and said, Jesus, this is going on. This is what's happening. Blah, 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 blah. All the things were happening and they were frantic in the house and Jesus spoke to them and said, hey, uh, again, uh, number 49, it goes back to verse 49. He says, the whole house came to him and the rulers of uh, this man's house and, and they brought the dead daughter. He says, and trouble not the master. Don't trouble him. He's here now. Don't trouble him. Don't trouble him because, because she's dead. They thought it was over. It's never over till God says it's over. I mean, know that? They said, I don't trouble the master. Don't bother God about this issue. Don't bother. It's dead. And the Bible says in verse uh, 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 50 is where I want to get you. The Bible says that when Jesus heard it, he answered and said, fear not, believe only. Don't fear, but believe. And she shall be made whole. You see, today, all these folks gathered around to get something from God. And he was letting them know even in a dead situation, Amen. God can make it whole. Amen. In a dead moment, God can do something. Again, he says, fear not. No fear around Jesus. Let me say it today. Amen. There's no fear when you have Christ. You don't have to fear any devils. We preached a few weeks ago about no weapon formed against you shall prosper. There has to be no fear. No fear because Jesus is your Lord and Savior. He told him, he says, don't fear today. Don't fear because Jesus is in control. Don't fear when Jesus is around and there's safety around. There's protection. There's comfort to the soul. There's empowerment this morning around him and around you and I today. You don't have to fear. Why? Because Jesus Jesus is here. The Bible goes on in verse 51. Then when he came into the house, he suffered the men, no man to go in. The Bible says, and saved Peter and James and John and the fathers and his mothers and maidens. The Bible tells us here. And so when he came to this place, he came to this place. And the Bible says that he took his men with him, Peter, James, and John. Thank God for good men. Thank God for good men that will follow Jesus. The Bible says he took with him Peter, James, and John. And the father and the mother. He has some good men around him. We need some more good men. Amen. So good men that will follow Jesus. Who are you following today? Who are you following? Men? 
Come on, man, speak to me. Amen. Who are we following? Amen. How many followers of men followers of Jesus do we have? Amen. Who are you following? Who's your king? Amen. Who are you following? Amen. Do we follow the devil? Jesus out of month. Ladies, who do you follow? Follow Jesus. The Bible says these men followed him. We need some more men that will follow Christ. Stop following the devil. Stop following the crowd. Stop following men and women. Stop following things of this world today. Follow Jesus today. Follow the Lord our God. Listen to Christ. Follow after him. Say, come after Jesus today. Why, God loves you this morning. Follow Jesus. The Bible says, and all wept and bewailed him. Hey Amen. If y'all can grab the door for me again. The Bible says, and he said, weep not. She's not dead, but sleeping. As we finish. Right. Amen. He said, she's not dead. Amen. She's not dead, but she's sleeping. A dead situation to us. It's just, it's just laying in sleep right now. I'm telling you today, when we gather and throng around Jesus, when we get around Jesus, anything can happen. Come on. Anything can happen, brothers and sisters today. How many going to believe that with us? Perhaps you're saying again, it's, it's too late for me. It's not too late. It's not too late for your marriage. It's not too late for your, your husband, your wife, your children, uh, your circumstances. It's not too late. The doctor tells you it's too late. No, it's not too late. It's never too late. It's not too late, my friend, today. The Bible says weep not. Weep not. Why? Because she's just sleeping. I'm about to wake her up. And you know what? This morning, let's wake up our faith. We serve a mighty God that's able to do great things. We serve a mighty God. How many gonna wake up your faith this morning and say, I'm gonna believe God. I'm gonna trust God for the impossible. Trust God for salvation. Trust God for the Holy Ghost. Trust God for this miracle. Wake it up, wake it up, stir it up, and say, God, I believe this morning. And everyone around and about get doubt, but believe. Everybody else in the room doubts. The doctor doubts. The friends doubt, but believe this morning. And how every, regardless of how everyone looks at it, believe. Regardless of the circumstance, the Bible says he laughed in the scorn. He laughed in the scorn and, and knowing uh, she was dead. Uh, knowing she was dead. The Bible says, but he put him out. Uh, they locked, laughed and mocked at Christ. Again, we said before, not everybody comes to get something from God or doubts God. But the Bible says he put them all out. Something got put doubt out your mind. Let's go to the next verse. They doubted God. You got to skip it. Uh, verses 53. They laughed at Jesus. They laughed at him. The Bible says, yeah, cast out the scorn. The Bible says, knowing, knowing as they laughed at him, they said, ah, he's dead. Ah, they laughed at Jesus. Some people, it's a dangerous world when we start laughing at God. It's a dangerous world. That's where we're at now. People mock God and question God and tell him he's real. And if you open up your mind and let him be real to you, back to what we said earlier, and open and begin to serve according to your faith, be it unto you, according to your belief. Those that received him, he said he, to them that he gave power. He gave power to those that believed, to those that would trust. And the Bible says, he said in verse 54, he kicked them out. He says, y'all get out. The doubts and fears kicked them out. And he says, he put them all out and took her by the hand and called the man. He says, arise, arise. My friend today, let your faith arise this morning. Let your hope arise. Let your belief in God arise. I'm telling you, we in a season where breakthrough is. I believe that today. There's a season as we close out 2022. God is able to do something awesome. Amen. God is able to break through with some lies. Raise up your faith and say, no, it's not over. Amen. It's not over. It's not over. But keep praying. The devil wants us to quit praying. He wants us to stop praying. Stop believing. But he took her by the hand. The Bible says he put them all out and called and said, Arise. And the Spirit came again and arose straightway. The Spirit of God had came in. That's what we need, the Spirit of God. My friend, brother, sister, damn, get the Spirit of God living in you. 
the spirit of God amen, is what we need to stir things up. Uh, the spirit of God, the spirit came into this girl and the Bible says a straight way she arose. Uh, include God in your plans. Include God in your future. Include God in it. And when God is in it, there's nothing that's impossible. Come on up. Uh, and she and her parents, uh, in 56 we close, and she and her parents, uh, her parents were astonished. Uh, God, I believe in this last few weeks of this year, uh, God can do some astonishing things this week and beyond the Lord tarries. Let me say to him, God can astonish and blow some minds away. Uh, let's believe. Let's lock in. As we share with the third time, let's lock in and believe some great things that can happen. Astonishing things. Awesome things. Uh, as we tap into the spirit of God. Not so much uh, again great mighty works, all these different things, but tapping into the spirit. God moves in the spiritual realm. God can move in the power of his Holy Spirit. How many believe it today? And as you tap into the spiritual man, forget what the flesh thinks. Forget what the, how it looks on the outside. Forget what how the numbers add up. Don't try to do all of that, but tap into the spirit and say, God, I'm going to believe. Amen. God, I'm going to take you at your word. God, you said in your word, you can take this dead situation. Pastor Whitlock said it this weekend. He can take a dead situation and breathe life back into it. And the Bible says in the parents were astonished. He came and charged him. They said, you go tell no man what was done. Amen. Why did he, why did we always do that? Because he wasn't ready to be crucified. They knew they was going to kill him sooner than what he's supposed to be killed. But you know what? Again, the power of God. You can't help but tell somebody. You can't help but believe today. My friend today, would you come believing? Would you come believing? Come trusting. Come and know that he is God. Come knowing that he is Lord. Come knowing that he's all powerful. He's almighty. Come knowing that he is able. They thronged him. I need something. They thronged him. They thronged Jesus. He could barely make it through the crowd because everybody had a need. They wanted and they received. The Bible says just in his presence and even in Peter, his walk with God, the Bible says his shadow passed by the people and they were healed. The power of God was there. The power of God. And one man said, Lord, just speak the word. I live all the way on the other side of the city. Just speak it. We speak it, no doubt, all the way over in Fort Greene where the hospital's at, uh, 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 Charlene. Amen. So, Quincy, we still speak it. We still speak it all the way across the shores, maybe down in South America, wherever it may be, wherever you may dwell, wherever your miracle is, wherever your need is, before you get home, speak that thing. God is a mighty God. They thrown him. Thrown. Well, again, you pray, we pray, believe God, touch and agree on the thing. God can do a great and mighty word. Can you imagine the roar of the crowd? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Ah, the clamor that was going on, the crowd, and Jesus couldn't hear everything at one time, but no doubt he was issuing out need after need after need. Whatever your need is, God can do it. Whatever your need is, I'm telling you today, just strong him. Just come to him. Wrap your arms around him. Get to him. Touch his garment. Whatever you got to do, just get to him. Get to him today. Get to Jesus this morning. Get to our Lord. Lord and our Savior, my friend, uh, he's able to meet that need. Uh, gathering around Jesus. Gather around him uh, as the altar prayers open this morning. Uh, we can even gather around this altar this morning. I'm telling you, God has some breakthrough for men and women. Uh, come on and gather around this altar with us. Uh, let's believe God. Uh, let's trust God. Uh, they gathered around because they needed God. They had a desperate approach and said, Lord, we need you now more than ever. Our society in 2022, we need you now more than ever. We need you for a financial breakthrough. We need you for a health breakthrough. We need you for salvation. We need you for deliverance. Whatever that need is, crawl, throng around Jesus. Gather around. Gather around and receive something from the Lord. Get to Jesus. Get to him. He can help. How many say that? He can help. Let him help. And as many as received him, as many as believed, they, no doubt, were blessed. As we close, whatever your need is today, if you're not saved today, give your life over to him. Give your life over to Christ. Seek his face. Call on him. Talk with him. Say, Jesus, I need a touch. I need a touch from the King. If you need salvation today, ask the Lord into your life. If you want to be saved, those watching online, even in this service, 
If you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, believe that he died on the cross. Believe that he gave his life. Believe that he shed his innocent blood. Died and went to hell for us. Rose again on the third day. No doubt he is interceding for you and I on the right hand of the Father up in glory now. Make him Lord of your life. Ask him, accept him, receive him. Be born again. Be born again. Jesus said we must be born again. We must do it. Let's do it again. He'll give you a new start. A new beginning. Thronging around Jesus, come to him. If you are saved today, come, come. Say, God, I want more of you. I want your spirit. I want your touch. I want your favor. God, I want to know more of you. I want to know you and the power of your resurrection. I want to know you and your word and your strength. God, all that you do, I want to know you more. Let us get closer to Jesus. Closer and closer and closer. More and more like him. Let's strong to him this morning. Not only that, not only that, but again, whatever need it is in this house. You may be up against the wall right now. But that wall is not too big for our God. Let me say that. Our wall, that wall is not too big. That giant's not too big. That circumstance is not too big. He says she's not dead. Death seemed real big. To that family. But Jesus reassured them she's just sleeping. So it shows us he can do anything but fail. And whatever your need is, today, according to his will, he'll answer bring it to Jesus today. Come to, come to the altar of prayer whatever it is turn your seats and look to Christ all we're trying to get to do is look to him throng him worship him today and she begin to sing as unto the Lord God bless you I pray the altar of prayer is open let the Lord have your way in this place God bless you
found peace. The family found peace. The broken found peace. The storms find peace. We gather around your throne, Lord, this morning. Gather around his throne. Enter into the kingdom, the throne room of God. Enter into the place where he is. Make your petition on the hand. Enter into the gates. Say, Lord, it's me. I have a need. Accomplish your divine word. Let it be done. Amen, amen. God bless your prayer. Gather around, throw around him. Gather around him. And let him have his way. God bless your prayer. We look forward to seeing you. Be the will of Lord our next service in person. Uh, 334 Ashford Street. Amen. We are located here. It's up to the Lord. Real, uh, real quickly before they hang up there. Amen. Give an opportunity to give. Uh, Brandon, if you put up on the screen real quickly. Up on the screen, opportunity to give is unto the Lord. Those watching online, if you don't know, you can give through our website at www.myntcc.org forward slash Brooklyn NY. Also through our Zelle our church email. Text to give as well at 347 229 We say thank you for those watching online. God bless you. I pray those watching online. We'll see you soon. Amen. This time we'll receive an offering as well.